Hi, now we're in week six. I hope you enjoyed all those assessments in week five. I know it was a lot, but it was good for you. It's good to assess those things. So now we're going to look at our flexibility in chapter six. How flexible are you? And analyzing the world around you. Um, we're all based on our personality and experiences. Some of us are more flexible than others. Some of us roll with it, some not so much. But the idea is the more flexible you are, the better you are at navigating the life we live in, and especially the career field process, okay? So this week, we're going to identify personal beliefs and assumptions that affect your career. What do you think about yourself and life, and how does it affect you, okay? Um, we're going to recognize how social and cultural conditions influence your career choices. You know, the world we live in, our family of origins, all of those things directly affect how we uh how we operate, you know, um, and the choices we make. Um, and maybe that's working and maybe it isn't. Maybe we need to look at that deeper. Um, we're going to identify trends that affect your career planning, you know. Uh, as I said, many of the jobs that we've had in the past are not even going to be around anymore. Um, an example would be coal jobs. We have these people, generations, four or five generations of coal miners. Now that's going out, so what are we going to do? Well, renewable energy is the thing. Maybe we need to get into renewable energy. We have to stay current and identify the changing uh, world we live in, okay? Um, and list changes in the workplace. What's changing in your workplace? Um, do you need to learn different computer skills? Do you need to stay, like for me as an instructor, uh, I saw a lot of really good professors go to the wayside because they just couldn't get into the online train online classes and they technology was a challenge or they just didn't want to do it or any number of things. And, you know, if you want to be a professor, in this day and age, you have to be able to do both. So so that's why I do what I do. Plus, I love it. It helps me out a lot. Um, and it helps you out. Um, we're recognizing the skills employers expect in new employees. What do they want in this new workforce? And then um, we're going to learn the value of a liberal arts degree, too. So, because this is a psych class. So that has to be in here somewhere. So in this chapter, you're going to again do some more exercises, but you're going to talk about societal influences on your career choices. Um, you know, depending on the culture you're from, you know, are you male? Are you female? Are you, you know, what are you? Where are you from? That um, can inf influence your career choices or be something you have to be aware of. As a woman, I even still struggle with that. Believe it or not, the glass ceiling is still here. And, um, you know, I have to fight really hard to to do certain things that I want to do. Um, so we're going to look at, at gender roles and do a little, uh, do some exercises on that. Equality in the workplace. That's something we hear all the time. Um, it's, it's a never-ending problem. And I think it's changing, but it's a long haul. Uh, I've watched my mom fight for the rights of women since I was a kid, and we're still you know, struggling for equal pay, pay and rights. And then same with, you know, what, no matter where you come from, if you're a person of color, if you're, if you're not, everyone has certain challenges and, and what's fair and what's not. And how do we, how do we fairly and equally do that? You know, how do we do that? So we're going to talk about that. And then we're going to um, look at non-traditional occupations and traditional occupations and facts and figures on, on wages. You're going to do a little research on that. Um, and then we're going to look at the barriers, a, uh, race, age, and disability. Now, of course, we have laws against that, but people are people, and it still happens. So we're going to look at these barriers and how we can navigate through those and help help stay out, keep us out of that trap, if you will. Um, we're going to look at pros and cons of uh, people that we know. Um, and the advantages and disadvantages they've had in the work that they do. It's going to give you a little chance to look at diversity. And then we're going to look at the changing workplace, and it's changing every day faster, faster, faster. I'm sitting here in my office actually doing a video lecture for you guys. That's a change. Never had to do that before. I'm enjoying it, but it's a change because online students expect a little bit more. And so what are the implications for you? Um, and now we have what's we're going to look at what's called knowledge age workers. What that means is, for the t for the first time in the history that of the planet that we're aware, of, we have a, people who are more knowledgeable or have access to more information than ever before. So does so how does a manager or a company deal with that? 
I mean, I'll give you an example. I, I'll teach a class and I'll have students in there fact-checking me on their phones while I'm lecturing. And at first that kind of bothered me and then I thought, no, I think that's good. It keeps me accountable and it gets their answers met or questions met answered. But at the same time, you know, this is knowledge group. You can't teach the same way you used to and just say, you better believe me because I say so because that's not the world we live in. New technology, of course, is a big part of that. And we're going to talk about technology in this chapter. Um, and we're going to look at the global economy. We live in a global world. We are about a, like a jello mold now. If one country does something, you know, they're, you know, all shakes and moves together. Um, and so how does a corporation structure their, life, their world around these changes? So we're going to talk about a global economy. And from an education standpoint, what I always like to say is the more education you get, the better because... We can't even generally get a job anywhere without a bachelor's degree. And on top of that, we're not competing with just the guy next door anymore. We're competing against the whole world. And in most countries, a master's degree is pretty standard. So these are things to consider as we're looking and we're going into the new knowledge age. Um, we're going to look at small business trends, women-owned businesses. Um, there is an influx after the whole economy crash in 2006, 2007 of getting back to home businesses. So that's changing. And we're going to look at trends going forward in and, and lifelong learning. Why we need to keep learning. When you stop learning, you just lose your edge. So it's always something to be doing. Or as Stephen Covey would say, sharpen that saw. Never stop learning. Even me. I have to continue to broaden my perspective and change. And we're going to look at the implications of that and the job growth trends that we're experiencing now, which are changing as we speak every day. Um, and so we're going to, and then we're going to talk about how to find your place in that changing world. Where is your niche? Where do you fit? And and we got some exercises, so I encourage you to do all the exercises because they're all very important, and they all help you to to um, get get the knowledge you need, and get prepared for the world we're going into. So that is Chapter 6, and I'll see you in Chapter 7.